Wherever I go, I feel like a foreigner. If I go to India, as soon as I open my mouth, everyone knows that I'm not from there. And when I'm over here, I get asked all the time where I'm from and how long I've been here. My parents are Hindu and they've brought me up as a Hindu person, but that's not something that I practice and that's not really something that I really know or understand. My name is Abala Mohan Shingade. I'm 20 years old. My parents moved to New Zealand in the year 2000, 12 years ago now. And at that time I was nine turning 10. Um, so I guess that makes me 1.5 Indian Kiwi. I'm currently studying at Elam and I'm going to be going into my honours year, which is the fourth year of the programme. If you ask me what have you gone out of Elam, it would be really hard to say that, you know, this is what I've learnt. But at the same time, I feel like I've learnt so much. The hardest thing about being an artist and Indian at the same time is that you don't have very many buddies. Not many Indian artists in New Zealand. But I guess that's what makes it interesting. I feel like I've got the right to perform Indian classical music, just because it's kind of been handed down to me by my teacher. But I don't feel like I've got the authority to experiment with the myths of India in my work. No one's told me that I can. I feel like it will be really useful to better understand how my cultural upbringing, being an Indian, living in New Zealand, how these two things kind of fit. My relationship with my parents, I think, is very open and very healthy. My dad's quite strict in the sense that he really values Indian culture, tradition and religious values. My mum is working as a healthcare assistant at the hospital and also she sometimes teaches. I feel like because she's teaching at school, she you know, knows what sort of culture that I'm going into when I step out of home. There's an interesting conversation that we're having at school at the moment. How important do you think the question of um, identity is? Because when I was in India, I felt like a foreigner, and when I'm here, I'm called a foreigner. Identity is something that's really important because um, that is something like having developing respect for yourself. Identity is something... Res if you feel, oh my God, I'm an Indian in between these people, that doesn't work. If you feel like, yes, I'm an Indian, I'm proud of it, and I respect you, whoever you are, whatever you are. And then you will be respected wherever you are. So I guess for you, it would be being proud of being an Indian. So what would that make me, being proud of being not Indian and not Kiwi, but something in between? You should take it as a privilege. We are citizens of two countries now. Tomorrow you go away to some other country, live there, maybe practice your art, you become a citizen of that country. But it should be good, it should be good that you know where your origin is. You know, Indians have moved to so many countries, for example, South Africa, um, Fiji, and other countries, you know. They still keep their identity, which is good which keeps their self-respect. 
If I wasn't doing art, what would you have had me do? Oh, we actually thought that you you would be doing music. Yeah, I was music and jazz was more than we money get like jazz school or something. Something in any, music. Any music, uh, music uh, instrument uh, or uh, vocal, kosa bhi. Music degree. Money get like music degree in jazz was more than money get like that. I've grown up in uh, Mount Albert area, very close to Sandringham. Sandringham is definitely like Little India in Auckland. There's a big, strong Indian community, and almost all Indian families that I know get their spices from the Sandringham spice stores. It's a perfect place, I think, to go to really experience biculturalism. Walking through, there, I always really find that I'm constantly coming up with new ideas to explore in art projects. When I went to the spice store in Sandringham, I noticed um, the holy colours that were out there. How kind of vibrant the colours are, and how kind of beautiful and pure the pigments are. That colour really struck me. Personally, I've never done any work that has been colourful in that visual sort of sense. So I think that could be a really useful and interesting sort of um, project to look at the holy festival. I think I'd really like to get a better handle on how I make artwork. My usual process has come out of the briefs that you get given at art school, so the first step is usually already made. Yeah, what you been up to, Kyle? Oh, uh, nothing much. What have you been up to? I'm just working on this art project. Oh yeah. It's about like um, this festival coming up, the Festival of Colours. Yeah. As part of my research, I really enjoy talking to people about identity, culture, um, what it means for them to be in New Zealand, things like that. So, Jorge, tell me a bit more about you. How do you fit your Mexicanness in New Zealand? My my accent makes me uh, go anywhere around here. You know, like breaks breaks the breaks, breaks the tension, tension breaks, yeah. breaks the ice. You know. Like, um, everyone wants to know if you, uh, if you instead of having um, cars, you have donkeys, you know, or riding <laughs> horses. What do you think when you think of Indian culture or Indians in general? I think, I think, I think when they talk, they talk like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, do I talk like that? Just like that. Not really. But actually, what I think about Indians, uh, first thing is food, because it's really similar to the food in Mexico. Yeah. Like same spicy, same kind of like cuisine. Yeah, full of flavor. Full of flavor. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what I think about Indians, and they're really cool people. Yeah. So Kyle, you're pretty much Kiwi. It's my turn. I am pretty much Kiwi. Yeah, you're born I here. I was born here. So what do you yeah. reckon? Just being born here makes you Kiwi? No, no, not by long shot. I think I'm not. Not fully Kiwi, because being brought up by Asian parents still has that effect. Yeah, totally. And what do you think about me? You've known me since high school? Hmm. I... I would have to say you're pretty Kiwi, actually. Pretty Kiwi. Yeah. But actually, no. Oh, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I like that. That's a cool answer. <laughs> so have you ever had, like, a, an identity crisis sort of thing, when you didn't know where you kind of fitted and... I think I've been brought up just the right mix. I still um, like Asian culture, really am into my academics and into doing well and good in life, but it's good that I also can have fun, I think. So I think identity crisis, like, it's just how you're brought up. Like, you should, you should just do what you're happy with, I guess. You shouldn't never have a crisis, really. I guess so, that's yeah. a part of what this is about, I guess. Figuring out that in-between space and being happy with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's my go, you've had too many. <laughs> I found what Kyle had to say about identity crisis quite interesting. 
Everyone in New Zealand, no matter if they're a Kiwi or if they're Indian or Chinese, whatever, goes through a process of knowing how they fit into society. This is a ceremony that's similar to Thanksgiving. We used to do it more often, perhaps once a week, or once every two weeks, but now it's once every couple of months. Whenever I'm made to visit temples and participate in the rituals and routines of my parents' religion, you kind of just do it out of respect and it's not something that I really would do if it wasn't my parents, although they wouldn't like me saying, but it's just part of the culture and tradition, I guess. Ma, hmm? is it okay if I ask you a few questions? Is yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. So, it would be really cool to know what sort of expectation do you have in terms of um, just how my, how Indian I have to be? Would you still want me practicing Hinduism? It's. Um, I would love to because it's. It's a part of your family. It's a part of your culture. And what about? future relationships, would you be happier if it was an Indian person or would you not mind if it was anyone else? You want an honest answer for this? Yes. <laughs> I would really be happy if it is an Indian girl. That is one constant worry, not just for me. All parents, I think, would love to have their children, spouses to be from their own community. You know, when it comes to morals and values, uh, trust and things like that, it's easy. Yeah. Hey, Chino, I actually have a question for you. Yeah. Can I? Like, you know how we have been taking care of our parents, they have been taking care of their parents, so on. Will you be taking care of us when we grow old? <laughs> How much will you be able to do for us? As much as, as much as I, ex oh, it, it's hard to say because I'm not mature enough and that situation is not there yet for me to answer that kind of question. Do you mean like, you know, for example, if you, when you get married and have kids, would you rather be like, live by yourself or would you keep us with you? Well, that's if I get married and have kids also. No, that's cut. What? No, I don't want that answer. What do you mean you don't? You can't not want an answer. No, how can you say you're not going to marry? I can say that. No. <laughs> that takes you to the past, no? Just be open. No, 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 no. Why do you think that? I'm just telling you what it is. Okay. Right now, I'm not thinking about that kind of crap. Okay, that's fine. But... You... No, no. Let's not go there. Okay. I feel like I'm really struggling to translate the sort of visual and energetic sort of vibes of the Holy Festival into work. It'd be useful maybe talking to artists that are already practicing, like Tiffany Singh, who's a really prolific artist. Hey, man, how's it hey. going? Good to see you. And you, come in. Thank you. So what are you working on these days? I'm working towards a solo show at White Space in September. So I would like to make works with multiples of the waxes. They smell really nice when they're melting. Yeah, the beeswax, eh? Yeah. That's interesting because, you know, you've always had a very strong Eastern influence. Have you found that quite challenging to sort of present yourself in that way? Uh, yeah, I've constantly asked whether I because I wasn't brought up in India, have a right to draw on all of the aesthetics yeah. and the spiritual background and beliefs to bring it through into my work. But 
I guess from spending three years in the East and studying comparative religion and yeah. being in ashrams and monasteries in northern India, yeah. um, I, I think I've probably found a blend of what works with, for me. When you, when you did your work in art space, um, drawing from the Holy Festival, um, did you do a lot of research around the festival or was it using the aesthetics and using the colours and using the... Um, I'd spent two holy festivals in India when I lived there. Yeah. So I was just so... You know, when I first came back to New Zealand after living in India, I yeah. really had no... I was... There was no inspiration, there was no colour, there was oh, no yeah. sounds, there were no people, yeah. there were no piles of spices and petals and... I wasn't overwhelmed in a sensory way. I think you've got it in this book, don't you? Yeah, I do. That's um, that's from the Taiwan show. But the art space pictures in there. Yeah, they are. So I wanted to create a work that people could relate to through all different channels. So right. the materials weren't purely from the Holy Festival. Yeah. They encompassed a lot of different ceremonies throughout yeah. the world. I find the Holy Festival interesting one because of the colour and because how everyone just kind of gets into it moves and there's always this kind of momentum and movement in the festival you know and it really is overwhelming it's in a way. Totally overwhelming. That's what I got from the East. The sensory experience, the incense, the colours, the spices, you know the music, the bells, the chanting, everything's alive. I guess it's safe to say that while I was driving my car and going to the festival, I was a little bit apprehensive or a little bit unsure whether I would enjoy it. But it felt like a really great atmosphere. And once you're covered in pigment and once you're covered in paint, it's really hard to kind of distinguish, you know, what ethnicity you are, you know, if you're Indian or Pakeha or Maori or whatever, it's really hard to distinguish. So it makes it easier for other people from different backgrounds who have no idea what's going on to participate. It really felt like, you know, it was open to, for participation. It felt like it was really inclusive. There's been a subtle shift through this journey. Up till now, there's been this east and there's been this west and they're sitting very neatly side by side. But now I feel like there's a big crossover which is perhaps more realistic and more how I feel. An interesting question would be, am I an Indian artist working with Indian materials in New Zealand, or am I a Kiwi artist who is interested in Indian philosophies? And I think taking either position would kind of be false. I don't see myself as being one or the other. I'm not a Kiwi and I'm not an Indian in the full sense. If there's anything that I could say about people who live in two cultures or who live in both worlds, per se, it would be that we've got something that no one else really has in the same way. I, living in two cultures at once, wouldn't have the same sort of thing as another person living in two cultures at once. It's really dynamic in the sense that there's so many differences that, that exist. 
So I've made this video, this experiment in response to the holy festival, the rituals, the journey that I've been through. And it's in the form of a video like collage that I've worked with all these participants and I've asked them to um, smear their faces with color as though it was their makeup for the day. Um, so I hope there's something in this video that you can enjoy and I'll show it to you now. Japan, Japan, Satya Vachana Kyo Chhod Diya Naam Japan Kyo Chhod Diya 